Making a steam plant using three Cotswold Heritage steam engines. Part 12. Making the exhaust manifold and completing the piping, followed by a live steam test. But first of all, I need to make a suitable manifold that will accept three pipes from the steam outlets from the engines and combine these three steam outlets into one to connect to the condenser. It would have been easy to make both of these manifolds, the one from the boiler and the one to the condenser, identical. That way I would not have had to use some more footage or narrate it, but this one's going to be different. Here I have a piece of brass block in the four jaw cell centering chuck in my Smart and Brown lathe. First of all, I faced off the end of the block, then I drilled it with a centre drill, drilled it all the way through with a 7 seconds of an inch drill, and in this part of the sequence I've just finished tapping the hole down the centre, and currently the tap has been withdrawn from the work. You may be thinking, why didn't I make the manifold in exactly the same way and the same design as the one that fits to the boiler? If I put the same type of manifold on the condenser, it's just not going to look good fitted so high up on a smaller component like a condenser. And that, coupled with the fact that the condenser's right in the middle of the plant and very visible, is why I chose to do it this way. I wanted to just have a single pipe going into the condenser. So this manifold is going to be fitted at the bottom end of the pipe. In the drilling machine, I drilled and tapped a hole in the centre of the block, quarter by 40 threads per inch. Then I turned the block over in the machine vise on the drilling machine and drilled part of the way through using a 9 30 seconds of an inch drill and I threaded this 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. I'd like to apologise for this wobbly video clip. That's because I never bolted my drilling machine to the floor. I'm cleaning up the brass block using a piece of 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper. And you know what they say, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And I want a good finish on this one. I think it looks okay as it is. I don't want to polish it, that would not look good and it would round the edges. Time now to fit the steam unions. I turned down a commercial 5 16 by 32 union and I fitted this in the middle using a copper washer and some Loctite 542. Then in the same way, I fit the quarter by 40 unions in the rest of the holes. And eventually it looks like this. There are many ways that I could have done this. I could have silver soldered the main pipe into it. But in the end, I did it this way with replaceable unions. This is a piece of 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe and I'm bending it using the middle size of pipe bender that I have. I've had this pipe bender for many years and I think I bought it at Blackgate's Engineering a long while ago. And here is the finished manifold, complete with its pipe attached. All I need to do now is mount this to the condenser. I'm using my Barco spanner for this, so I don't mark the nut. Because as you can see in this clip, this nut is right at the top of the condenser and very visible. And now once again, it's a small pipe bending marathon to connect the exhaust piping from the three engines to this manifold fitted to the condenser. And here's the pipe as it exits the Perseus engine. And this is how the Perseus engine connects to the manifold. And once again, I didn't do this job in one attempt. It's quite difficult to get all the pipe runs to be nice and even. This is shortly before I've finished the job, but as you can see, there's a little bit more bending to be done. The reason for fitting a double union on the gas pipeline is so that if the owner of the engine wants to change the gas supply to a normal tap that goes onto a canister rather than this small tank, it will be a very simple job to do. Some manufacturers use quarter by 32 threads per inch, but Cotswold Heritage use quarter by 40. The pipe that's fitted to the double union is also quarter by 40. Now it's time for a test run of the plant. I can't fill this Cotswold Heritage tank because I don't have the fittings, so I'm having to improvise by using some silicone rubber tubing and a pair of cable ties. There's plenty of water in the boiler, nearly a full glass. So let the steam test begin. I'll light the gas first. I lit the gas by holding my small gas lighter over the chimney, and in this clip I'm putting my hand over the chimney so I can verify that the burner is lit by the heat coming out of the chimney. The first job to do is to make sure that all of the displacement lubricators are filled. Surprisingly, I didn't receive one comment telling me that I got the displacement lubricators the wrong way around. I did it this way so that all of the taps were facing the operator. The only one that is the right way around is the one on the aerial engine, and as you can see, the short pipe from the tank goes to the steam inlet of the engine. And by piping the displacement lubricator valve assembly this way, the valve cuts off the steam to the displacement lubricator. But doing it the other way, 
I cannot cut off the steam to the lubricator. Once again the displacement lubricator is fitted the wrong way around on the vertical engine too. You can see the oil bubbling slightly and there's no real pressure in the boiler yet. The water is just starting to boil. The orientation of the lubricators in this plant is not a problem. The boiler is small, you turn the gas off and the steam pressure in the boiler quickly drops and goes down to zero. While the pressure is dropping you open the bottom valve to clear the condensate and when the pressure's gone remove the top cap to refill the lubricator. Now the pressure is rising rapidly. By opening this valve that's going to be used for compressed air inlet into the boiler you can see that there's steam coming out of it. So as soon as I've lubricated all the moving parts of every engine and I'll do this at high speed just to make it a quicker process it's finally time to start the test. I open the steam valve to the small vertical engine and that works ok. Then I open the steam valve to the aerial engine and that works fine too. And with a quick flick of the flywheel the Perseus engine bursts into life also, but the other two stop. It's a bit of a balancing act to get all the engines to run together. The boiler's quite small and immediately the pressure drops, but these engines are not under load, they work quite well. The pressure drops fairly quickly, but the engines keep going, which is a good thing. I'm going to pump some water into the boiler to see how far the pressure goes down. I have to remember that this is not a Castle Steam V6 coal-fired boiler. It's a very small gas-fired boiler. And when I pump the water in, the engines still run, which is a good thing, and the pressure drops to a very low figure. But nevertheless, the engines are still rotating, which is all that I want, really. Ordinarily I would use string on the steam inlet pipes of these engines but this steam is really not very hot by the time it's got down these long pipes and also white painted string would become very dirty very quickly if any attempt was made to clean the piping so I think for this plant the piping once it's all straightened out is going to look much better in natural copper. I'm going to remake the pipe run from the water tank to the hand pump because it's a bit too long and I had to put a kink in it and I don't like that. But the good news is, all of my copper pipe runs do not leak. This red vertical engine, named after the Egyptian goddess Isis, needs the piston rod repacking because it's leaking water a bit. I will do this tomorrow as I make some fine adjustments to the plant before the owner picks it up on Thursday evening. So that's about it for this series. Time for me to stop talking after saying thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.